What's up y'all? It's Dennis here from Do It All Garage. So I want to do another quick video on this uh, Prairie 360 2007 model four-wheel four drive that I'm working on. Um, I've done a few other videos on it. Uh, I actually rebuilt the front diff. I didn't do a video of that because it would have taken forever. But anyway, I went to look at the brake or check out how the brake pads were, what condition they were in. And there is actually no pad on this side. And the side I'm working on right now is the front left hand side okay so basically all i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how to get this thing off um you know some of you are highly skilled mechanics you know you already know all this but some of you it may help you out so i just wanted to uh make a quick video on it anyway right here these bolts those are actually the brake pad pins that's what holds the brake pad in okay or both brake pads actually to take the caliper off, you have to remove this bolt back here that's actually behind the brake caliper. And there's another one, it's really hard to see, but let's see if I can get the angle right. This one right back there, okay? And they are actually 12 millimeter bolts. You can see those. That is what actually holds the brake caliper on. They're going to be this one and the one below it. Now, I like to break those loose, okay? But before you take this caliper off, if you're changing the pads or rebuilding it or whatever, you want to break these loose as well because these have to come out to replace the pads. Now, before you take this caliper completely off, you want to uh, break those loose because if those things are stuck in there, or really hard to get out anyway um, you're gonna have a hard time holding that caliper with one hand and loosening those bolts with the other one so as you can see it's got these little tabs on it right here uh, I've already went ahead and bent that one down this one is still on there you can see that and focus in that is what keeps those bolts from backing out so just to save time on the video I actually backed one of them off already, uh, or bent it out of the way anyway. So I'm going to do the other one. Hopefully y'all can see this. Get my camera set up here. Okay. So, like I said, all you're going to really need is like an old screwdriver or some kind of chisel or punch or something like that. You want to wedge it right in there. Just tap on it. And it'll bend out. Okay. So now it's flat. Then, see what size that is. Yep, it's also a 12 millimeter. I don't know if I'd use an impact on these. I guess you could, but you don't want to take a chance on breaking them. Yeah, those are in there pretty tight. So I'm going to get them loose before I put an impact on. That way I can get those pins out of there. But on so one thing I did want to show you on this particular bike okay like i said right here this bolt's easy to get to pretty much if you have the right extensions i know a wobble extension helped me out a lot but that little groove that's cut out here in the uh, hub or strut assembly whatever you want to call it i actually had to I've got my trusty pittsburgh socket wrench 3 8 here i've got a wobble extension on it and a short 12 millimeter socket I actually went through the back of there to grab onto that one. Okay, so it's kind of hard doing this with one hand, but yeah, there you go. So as you can see, that's the only way I could get to it. But that was also caked full of dried up mud. So it was kind of a pain to get to. Set my 
camera back up here. So I'm going to take that off. And what I like to do before I put any of these bolts back in, I like to take a little bit, actually clean them first. I like to take a wire brush, clean the threads off of them. They're usually rusty and have a lot of dirt and stuff on them. And then uh, before I put them back in, I like to put a little bit of grease on them. You don't have to put a whole bunch. You don't definitely don't want it leaking out all over the uh, brake disc. Also, another little tip, get you a magnetic parts tray. If you do a lot of this kind of stuff, you probably want to get about 10 of them. So, both of these bolts came out. As you can see, that thing is really dirty. Uh, it looks like it's been in there for quite a while. So now, the caliper comes off. But, just like I was saying earlier, those bolts, even though I've already loosened them, they're still, I can't even turn them with my hand, even with a knurled extension. I'm going to grab my 3 8 impact fuel. What's up? I'm going to back those out. Okay. Just kind of take those out by hand. If they'll come out. There we go. Pretty rusty, pretty dirty. Okay, looks like they're both going to be the same. Okay, that one's pretty dirty as well. You want to make sure not to lose this. That's what holds your, basically keeps those bolts from backing out and your brake pads from falling out. Magnetic parts tray. All right. So, yep. There's no pad left in that at all, pretty much. Hopefully that's a little better. So I'm gonna do a little bit of work on this thing. Uh, just remember another little tip for these bikes. Uh, the brake pads on the front are both the same. So you don't have to buy a front left and a front right. A lot of, there are a lot of ATVs and side-by-sides and stuff out there that uh, they are different. And you want to be careful and when you buy them just make a mark on them that way when you're doing this you can uh, you don't have to get confused and go digging around looking for looking up part numbers you just know where they go so anyway as you can see hopefully you can see that I've got a lot of work to do I've got to get that pad out of there clean those out and I'm gonna rebuild these calipers but uh, I'll do that in another video but anyway I hope this helps some of y'all out uh, Feel free to like, subscribe, and comment and share. Thanks a lot.